it's good to see all of you. Thank you for coming. Today we're going to read the Bible. The Word of God, it is for our health and healing. You can wash your mind with the water of the Word. So today we're going to see how this whole story is about a wedding. God is getting married. To a city called New Jerusalem. Originally, the covenant of marriage was to the Hebrew nation at Mount Sinai. God rescued his bride to be. From the hands of Pharaoh and Egyptian slavery. And he led them to a mountain called Sinai where he made a covenant. He made the covenant with the Hebrew nation to take them as a bride to himself. And the people came into agreement with the covenant and the covenant was made. Later on, because of adultery of the nation chasing after other gods, and because of being unfaithful to their husband, the Lord, of divorce and put Israel away. Then because the covenant was by law, it was a lawful covenant. And the husband had to die in order to free the wife to marry again. But this time the covenant was made to both Jew and Gentile. So that the Lord could marry anyone who had faith. Faith that God is who God is, and He has done what He has done. And everybody who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 11 through 13. Romans chapter 10, verse 11 through 13. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. 
because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So you can see that the covenant promise is to the Jew and to the Greek or the Gentile. Gentile just means everybody that's not a Jew. Some translations call us barbarians. <laughs> So, what happened was a new covenant had been made by the blood of Jesus. Let's look at that real quick in Matthew chapter 26, 26 through 28. Matthew 26, 26 through 28. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take it and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So a new covenant had been made by the blood of Jesus. It's not that complicated. So let's get into the story about the marriage. Let's go to Matthew chapter 22, 1 through 14. Matthew 22, 1 through 14. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to summon those invited to the banquet, but they didn't want to come. Again, he sent out other servants and said, Tell those who are invited, See, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went away, one to his own farm, another to his own business, while the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, and he sent out his troops, killed those murderers, and burned down their city. Then he told his servants, The banquet is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go then to where the roads exit the city, and invite everyone you find to the banquet. So those servants went out to the roads and gathered everyone they found, both good and evil. The wedding banquet was filled with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed for the wedding. So he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. And the king told the attendant, Tie him up hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited if you were chosen. Uh, 
की शादी की और अपने नौकरों को भेजा के बुलाए उनको शादी में बुला लाए मगर उन्होंने आना ना चाह फिर उसने और नौकरों को ये कहकर भेजा के बुलाए हुए से कहो कि देखो मैंने इजाजत तैयार कर ली है मेरे बैल और मोटे मोटे जानवर जिम्मा हो चुके हैं और सब कुछ तैयार है शादी में और मगर वो बेप्रवाही करके चल दिए कोई अपने खेत को कोई अपनी सौदागिरी को और बाकी ने उसके नौकरों को पकड़ कर बेइज्जत किया और मार डाला बादशाह गजब ना हुआ उसने अपना लश्कर भेज कर उन खूनियों को हलाक कर दिया और उनका शहर जला दिया तब उसने अपने नौकरों से कहा कि शादी की जैसा तो तैयार है मगर बुलाए हुए लायक ना से बस रास्तों के नाकों पर जाओ और जितने तुम्हें मिले शादी में बुला लाओ और वो नौकर बाई रस्तों पर जाकर जो उन्हें मिले या बुरे और शादी की महफिल मेहमानों से बढ़ गई और जब बादशाह मेहमानों को देखने को अंदर आया तो उसने वहां एक आदमी को देखा जो शादी के लिबास के ना था और उसने उससे कहा या तो शादी की पेशाब मैंने बेगा यहाँ क्यों कर आ गया लेकिन उसका मुंह बंद हो गया पर बादशाह ने बातों से कहा इसके हाथ को बांध कर बाहर अंधेरे में डाल दो बाहर होना और दाँत पीसना होगा क्योंकि बुलाए हुए बहुत है मगर So Jesus told this story. That the kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. So God is getting married. And he's marrying to this people group includes both the Jew and the Greek. And all who call upon the name of the Lord. Let's look at the original covenant in Exodus chapter 19. This is where God marries the Hebrew nation. In the Hebrew culture, the husband goes to the wife. And makes up a list of expectations. That he expects from the wife during their marriage. And she either she either agrees or doesn't agree with the terms of the marriage. In this case, the people agreed. They told God, yes, we will do everything that you say. So you can see that the approach of God to the people was given to them through the law. The law was the list of expectations and the wife, the people, were expected to live out to the law through their marriage. And that's what happened to Moses when he was on the mountain. Uh, 
God gave the Ten Commandments, and the commandments were the expectations of the wife. And then when Moses came down off of the mountain, and spoke the words of the Lord to the people, the people agreed. They said, yes, we're going to do it. So we're going to look at that right now. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19, 3 through 11. Exodus 19, 3 through 11. Moses went up the mountain to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This is what you must say to the house of Jacob, and explain to the Israelites. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will carefully listen to me and keep my covenant, you will be my own possession out of all the peoples, although the whole earth is mine, and you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that you are to say to the Israelites. After Moses came back, he summoned the elders of the people and set before them all that these words that the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people respond together, we will do all that the Lord has spoken. So Moses brought the people's words back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud, so that the people will hear when I speak with you and will always believe you. Moses reported the people's words to the Lord, and the Lord told Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. They must wash their clothes and be prepared by the third day. For on the third day... The Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. So this is what God said in verse 5. Now, if you will carefully listen to me and keep my covenant. You will be my own possession out of all the peoples. Although the whole earth is mine. And you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. So, 
So that was God's intent to take unto himself a people for himself. To set them apart and give them the duties of a wife. To be faithful, to be loyal, and to take care of the house of the Lord. They were to be priests, and the priests keep the holy things. They keep the holy things, they keep the word, and they represent the husband at all times. So God intended to make a covenant. He gave them his word. And they agreed to the word in verse 8. When the people responded, we will do all that the Lord has spoken. So that was their agreement to the covenant. And this covenant was by law. It was a lawful covenant. Then there was additional laws and covenants. Statutes and ordinances were given to the people. So we now know that the law, the Ten Commandments, was given to the people. But through the law, because of the law, we found out that sin lived in our bodies. We found out that we were sinful people because the law exposed the sin in our lives. Let's continue with the story in Exodus 19, 16 through 22. Exodus 19, 16 through 22. On the third day, when morning came, there was thunder and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and a very loud blast from a trumpet, so that all the people in the camp shuddered. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was completely enveloped in smoke, because the Lord came down on it in fire. Its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain shook violently. And the sound of a trumpet grew louder, louder. Moses spoke to God and answered him in the thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. Then the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and he went up. The Lord directed Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to see the Lord. Otherwise, many of them will die. Even the priests who come near the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the anger of the Lord will break out against them. Oh, 
Amen. So that was the first covenant. So what happened was Israel and Judah were like an unfaithful wife. And they chased after false gods. So they were cheating. They were cheating on God. Basically, they were cheating on their husband. And the husband was at home waiting for his wife to return. But she never returned. She kept going after other gods and defiling the marriage. And God was like, look. And so God issued a divorce. He gave Israel a certificate of divorce and put Israel away. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 3, 1 through 10. Jeremiah chapter 3, 1 through 10. If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him to marry another, can he ever return to her? Wouldn't such a land be totally defiled? But you, you have prostituted yourself with many partners. Can you return to me? This is the Lord's declaration. Look to the barren heights and see. Where have you not been immoral? You sat waiting for them besides the highways like a nomad in the desert. You have defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. This is why the showers haven't come, why there has been no spring rain. You have the brazen look of a prostitute and refuse to be ashamed. Haven't you recently called to me, my father? You were my friend in my youth. Will he bear a grudge forever? Will he be endlessly infuriated? This is what you have said, but you have done the evil things that you are capable of. In the days of King Josiah, the Lord asked me, Have you seen what the unfaithful Israel has done? She has ascended under every high hill and gone under every green tree to prostitute herself there. I thought, after she had done all these things, she will return to me, but she didn't return. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I observed that it was because of unfaithful Israel had committed adultery that I had sent her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Nevertheless, her treacherous sister Judah was not afraid, but also went and prostituted herself. Indifferent to her prostitution, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. Yet, in spite of all this, her treacherous sister Judah didn't return to me with all her heart, only in pretense. 
Jeremiah chapter 3, 1 through 10. Amen. So there it is. The certificate. God separates himself from the people. His own people that he took to be a possession for himself. So God is all about the law. He is a holy God. And the first covenant was a lawful contract to the wife. Now, according to the law, the only way that the wife could be freed from the contract is if the husband died. Then the wife can enter into a new contract with another man. So Jesus, the one who had set up the first contract, came and he died. Contract. 
from the contractual obligations and marriage. So the law of the contract was voided. Not the law of the commandments, the law of the marriage was voided. So Israel and Judah were free to marry again. God extended the covenant, including a larger people group. Not only would he make a new contract for Israel and the Hebrew nation, according to his original promise to Abraham, but he extended the invitation just like in the book of Matthew, the first scripture. The scripture that said the banquet is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. And the king said, go then to where the roads exit the city and invite everyone you can find. So the servants of the king went out to the roads and gathered everyone they found, both good and evil. And the wedding banquet was filled with guests. So those the, the ones who were originally invited to the wedding was the Hebrew nation. The Israelites, the Jews, because Israel split into two nations after King Solomon. So even though they were invited in verse 5, they paid no attention. They paid no attention to what God was trying to do, and they went away. One to his own farm, and another to his own business. Now keep in mind that the Jews and Judah and Israel, they're all Hebrews. No attention to the fact that God was getting married. They did not care about what God was trying to do. Now one went to his own farm and the other his business, while the rest sees the rest of them seized his servants and mistreated them and killed them. Now, 
Now this is the part where the prophets come in. In Jesus' story, the servants were actually the prophets of God. People that had been appointed by God over a long period of time. God would speak to a man, and that man would proclaim the word of God. But the people would kill him because they didn't like what they were hearing. And they didn't want to change their lives. So they mistreated the prophets and they murdered them. Then the king was enraged and sent out his troops. He killed those murderers and burned down their city. Then he told the servants, the banquet is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Then go out to where the roads exit and invite everyone you can to the banquet. Now the Jews, they killed Jesus. They did not accept anything that God was trying to do for them. They rejected it, even to the point where they So when God extended the invitation to everyone else, something in the Bible called a partial, a partial hardening came upon Israel. Now this hardening is until the time of the Gentiles. Let's look at Romans chapter 11, 11 through 36. Romans 11, 11 through 36. I ask then, have they stumbled so as to fall? Absolutely not. On the contrary, by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel jealous. Now, if their transgression brings riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fullness bring? Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles, insofar as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry, if I might somehow make my own people jealous and save some of them. For if their rejection brings reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? Now, if the first fruits are holy, so is the whole batch. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Now, if some of the branches were broken off, and you, though a wild olive branch, were grafted in among them, and have come to share in the rich root of the cultivated olive tree, do not boast that you are better than those branches. But if you do boast, you do not sustain the root, but the root sustains you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. True enough, they were broken off because of unbelief. But you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but beware. Because if God did not spare the natural branches, 
he will not spare you either. Therefore, consider God's kindness and severity. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards you, if you remain in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not remain in unbelief, will be grafted in, because God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from your native wild olive tree, and against nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive trees? I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you will not be conceited. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Regarding the gospel, they are enemies for your advantage. But regarding election, they are loved because of the patriarchs, since God's gracious gifts and calling are irrevocable. As you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy through their disobedience, so they too now have disobeyed, resulting in mercy to you, so that they also may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he ha may have mercy on all. O oh, the depth of the riches, and the wisdom, and the knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and untraceable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? And who has ever given to God that he should be repaid? Far, For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen.
جس طرح تم پہلے خدا کے ناسمان تھے مگر اب ان کے ناسمانی تصویر سے تم پر ہوا اس طرح اب یہ اب ان پر بھی رہم ہو اس لیے کہ خدا نے سب پر نافرمانی میں سے گرفتار ہونے دیا تاکہ سب پر رہم فرمائے واہ خدا کی دولت اور حکمت اور علم کیا ہی امید ہے اس کے فیصلے کس قدر اطراف سے پڑے اور اس کی راہیں کیا ہی بے انسان ہے خدا کے کو کس کا جانا یا کون اس کا اسلام کار ہوا یا کس نے پہلے اسے کچھ دیا جس کا بندہ اسے دیا جائے کیونکہ اسی کی طرف سے اور اسی کے وسیلہ سے اور اسی کے لیے سب چیزیں ہیں اس کی تبدیل عمل تک ہوتی ہے آمین Amen. Amen. So I'm sorry, that was a lot of scripture, but it was necessary to hear that. You can see that Israel were the natural branches of the tree. not part of Israel, a wild branch. <clears throat> so for a while, God is removed, has removed the natural branches. And he has taken the wild branches and grafted them into the tree. Now this is only for a while. Still, a part of this prophecy hasn't happened yet. Then they will believe in God. So, like I said, I, I don't want to make this complicated. It's not. Yes, sir. Because of Israel's dis disbelief and the murder of the prophets and the murder of their husband. Israel still doesn't believe in Jesus today. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe Jesus was their God or the Messiah. They murdered Jesus and they're still Um, let's go to Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Okay, I got one more, one more scripture. Okay, dang it. Um, well, okay, let's go to Revelations twenty-one, one through eleven, and that'll be our finishing scripture. Revelations twenty-one, one through eleven. 
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne, Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them, and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more, because the previous things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. He also said, Write, because these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowards, faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls, filled with the seven last plagues, came and spoke with me. Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He then carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Arrayed with God's glory, her radiance was like a precious jewel, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Amen. So that's it. Um, we were able to see the first covenant and the new covenant today. And I thank you all. I thank you all for sitting and listening um, to this story. Amen.
Yes, sir, you can pray now. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, we come and we thank you for all these people in this room and their children, Lord. And we ask God that you be with every one of them and that you grow them up in the knowledge of you, Jesus, so that we all have the same understanding of you, Lord, that we could be one in, in knowledge and understanding. Um, we hope that you be with us um, all the way through until next week and our whole lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 तेरा नाम बात माना जाए तेरी बादशाही है तेरी मर्जी जैसे आसमान पर पूरी होती है जमीन रोटी आज हम बख्शते जिस पर कसर को माफ करते हैं Hello, Amen, brother. Thank you very much. God bless you, brother. God bless you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. So, there's a couple scriptures that I wasn't able to get to, um, but I'd like to share them with you since I got you here. So, who is the bride? It says, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem. So who's the bride? The holy city and its occupants, Jerusalem. Whoever occupies the city plus the city, that's the bride of Christ. So let's go to Revelation chapter 22 says, I did not see a temple in it because the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not shine on it because the glory of God illuminates it, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never close by day because it will never be night there. They will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false but only those written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelations 22, 1 through 3 says, Then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and out and of the Lamb down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit of the nations. And there will no longer be any curse. See, that's what I'm looking forward to. There will no longer be any curse. So in this Bible study, we were able to see the first covenant and the new covenant. And the partial hardening of Israel, which is to be done away with in prophecy. And then it will be the Gentiles and Israel and the marriage. And the city of Jerusalem, the bride of Christ. It's not complicated. And that's it, guys. I hope that you got something out of this Bible study, and we'll see you next time.